Oh, hey, Amaya. Hey, Anna. Oh. You know, I had to go do some shopping. Yeah. Had to get some stuff. You know, have you ever realized how much plastic is consumed every year? You know, I've never really put much thought into it, but you're right. This is like a lot of plastic. Mm -hmm. How much do you think is consumed every year? It's actually about 300 million tons globally. 300 million tons? Mm -hmm. Oh my god, that's so much plastic. I wonder how it's produced. It must be kind of like easy if it's so much. Yeah, well, many of the common household items are actually made from polyethylene. Polyethylene? What's that? In 1898, German scientist Hans von Petschmann first accidentally synthesized polyethylene through the investigation of diazomethane. Later, Eric Fawcett and Reginald Gibson designed the first industrially practical polyethylene synthesis in 1933. Most importantly, in 1953, the German chemist Carl Ziegler developed a catalytic system based on titanium halides and organoaluminum compounds. So what exactly is polyethylene? Polyethylene is a polymer, or a large macromolecule composed of repeating subunits called monomers. Imagine a chain of paper clips. Depending on the size of the paper clips, and the number of paper clips you link up, the chain will have different properties. Chains made using larger paper clips will be stronger than an equally long chain made using smaller paper clips. You can also connect your paperclip chains for strength and rigidity. Just like you can create a long chain of paperclips, you can create a long chain of monomers and even link them up. Like the paperclip chain, the properties of a polymer are dependent on the monomers that make it up. Polyethylene is a polymer composed of units of ethylene. Ethylene is made by heating the natural gas ethane to about 820 degrees Celsius, causing the molecule to break apart into ethylene and hydrogen gas. So there are actually many variations of polyethylene. For example, low-density polyethylene, which is flexible and tough. Low-density polyethylene is made by free radical polymerization using organic peroxides. First, the peroxide bond is cleaved and interacts with the double bond of ethylene to create a radical intermediate. This intermediate then reacts with additional units of ethylene until the desired length is obtained. This produces long chains with many short branches. So high density polyethylene is a lot stronger than low density polyethylene and is used for materials like milk cartons and uh, laundry detergent. Oh wow, so would this be like low density polyethylene then? Like yes, sandwich bags? You are exactly right. High density polyethylene is commonly produced through organometallic intermediates using the Ziegler Nata catalyst, which is composed of a combination of titanium 3 chloride and diethyl aluminum chloride. Ethylene is polymerized through a series of interactions and migrations with the catalyst complex to produce long linear chains. So there are actually many other variations of polyethylene, including some made for toys, others for PVC, and even hip replacements. Oh, wow. Thank you so much, Amaya. I learned so much about polyethylene. Oh, you're so welcome, man. Polyethylene is derived from modified natural gas, which is not a renewable energy source. Plastic is consumed so heavily around the world that in the U.S. alone, about 30 million tons of plastic is discarded. Only 6% gets recycled and 7% gets converted into energy. The rest ends up in landfills and oceans. Plastic does not degrade. It takes a thousand years or longer to decompose, and when it does, it releases harsh chemicals into the atmosphere. Plastic has become a major pollutant. We have all felt the impacts plastic has on beaches, parks, streets, and so on. Alternatively, corn and sugar can be used to produce ethylene. This, however, is also problematic in that fields of corn or sugar will release high levels of CO2 when wiped out for production of ethylene. Our best option is recycling plastic and buying items that are made from recycled materials. As you can see, there is no real alternative for the production and consumption of plastic. It is up to our generation to find an alternative for plastic. For now, we can all do our part by finding new ways to reuse the plastic we already have at home and reducing the amount we throw away. Okay.